Well, hello, friends. It's good to see you back again with us for another episode in the study of the Word of God. We're bringing you a series of studies on the Lord's Supper that uh, is taken from uh, a book that I wrote some time ago in, entitled simply that, The Lord's Supper. I want to encourage you to get a copy of this book. You may do so uh, through Amazon.com or uh, you can order it from Barnes and Nobles or anywhere that books are sold. We're going to go to the Word of the Lord in at this time, and we're all, I want to talk about the Christian altar. You might say, Bishop Hayes, what does the Christian altar have to do with the Lord's table? Before we go to the Word of the Lord, let's go to the Lord of the Word. Heavenly Father, we come to you just now in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, and we ask that you illumine all in us, that is darkness, and everyone said amen and amen. In the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 10, the writer of Hebrews says this. He says, we have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. Now, it may surprise you that this is the only place in the New Testament where the Christian altar is mentioned. I grew up, as many of you have, with the altar being that bench that was up uh, in the front of the church. You get to the uh, end of the roll of pews or the really the first pew from the pulpit, and then there is a, a little open space, and then there is a bench there that after the preacher preaches, altar call is given. That's part of the liturgy that I talked about earlier of uh, the lower Protestant churches. And uh, so even Baptist-style churches and, and Pentecostal-style churches have a liturgy after the sermon and altar call is given. And uh, that bench that people are called to come and kneel at and to pray. That's what we grew up recognizing as an altar. But that's not what the Bible calls the Christian altar. The writer of Hebrews, and we don't know for sure who it was. Some say Paul, some say Apollos, some say Barnabas. And in different uh, uh epochs of my life, I have had different ones that I have favored as who actually wrote the book of Barnabas, so I'm not going to, uh, the book, <laughs> Froder and Slip, you know now who I really think wrote the book of, book of Hebrews, uh, uh, but I'm not going to make a definitive announcement who I think wrote the book of Hebrews, but it, the teaching is definitely Pauline, so it's somebody that had a close connection to the Apostle Paul, though probably not Paul, because the writer of Hebrews says clearly that he did not see uh, Jesus personally. I doubt if Paul would make that statement since Christ appeared to him on the road to Damascus. But anyway, it's a great book. It's a, it's a wonderful book. The, the Greek of, of this book is impeccable, and uh, it is just a, a, an amazing book document. But uh, it, the writer of the book of Hebrews then tells us that the Christians do have an altar, that they who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat from. Here the altar, the Christian altar, is the Lord's table. The Lord's table, you see the Christians in that, in that transitional period when Christianity was considered just to be a sect of Judaism, uh, Christians tried to do both. They tried to keep a foot in both worlds. They tried to go to temple on Saturday and go to church on Sunday. They partook of the altar during the holy days and the feast days, eating of the things offered on the altar in the temple, and then they would come into the Christian services and eat from the Christian altar. The only place in, oh, by the way, the writer of Hebrews says that ought not to be. 
You, you can't be partaker of that altar and come and partake, uh, or you should not come and partake of the Christian altar. The fact that Christians were doing it is proof positive that they were keeping a literal meal of something, and the Bible teaches us it was bread and wine, to commemorate uh, the death of Christ, and not only co to commemorate the death of Christ, to bring uh, spiritual nourishment, healing, uh, and also healing of the body and healing of the soul as well. So this was a very important part of uh, Christianity from the very jump off, and uh, those that were trying to live in both worlds, uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, you should not do that. He said, we have an altar that those who serve the tabernacle, those who still are, are trying to uh, worship in the temple, they have no right to eat from our altar. So what we have, what we have grown up with in the uh, Pentecostal Baptist style churches and I keep referring to those because most likely uh, that gets most of the people that are viewing our videos. But if you are a Catholic and if you are Orthodox, Eastern, and uh, Oriental Orthodox, and maybe not so much, but there was a bench up front. Now that bench is not there in most churches. Usually they have built steps across the front so people come and kneel at the steps. But that was not ever the Christian altar. That was a mourner's bench, a place where uh, people came to mourn for their sins. The real Christian altar was the Lord's table, is the Lord's table. And it was a sad day, sad day in our churches when the Lord's table, which was at one point center, it was the altarpiece of our churches. The pulpits were off on the side. But when that centerpiece of our worship, when that centerpiece of our religiosities was moved out of the way and the pulpit was moved to the center. Now, you know, the Word of God is important. The preaching is important, but it is not as important as the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And most of our churches today, first they took the Lord's table and they moved it off to the side and then maybe only brought it back at once every quarter or once every month or, or once ever annually when they keep the Lord's Supper. Uh, and then eventually they moved it totally out of the churches altogether. Most of you that are watching me right now, you attend a church that doesn't even have a Christian altar. The mourner's bitch is not the Christian altar. A great uh, violence was done to our faith when the emphasis of our focus was taken off of the Lord's table and was put someplace else, especially on a mourner's bench, because then what that is saying is, uh, really, it, it, it is emphasizing a salvation by works, because it's saying if you pray enough, if you mourn enough, if you repent enough, you may, emphasis being on the word may, be saved. But that message is different than the message that is declared by the true Christian altar, the Lord's table. That message that the Lord's table presents is our salvation, our hope of redemption is not in us but it's in his shed blood. It is in his broken flesh. And that is constantly preached. And that is constantly in the center of the church, of the house of worship. So people then realize salvation is not my works, but salvation is not about what I have done or do or will do, but salvation is on what he has already done, on the finished work of the cross on the finished work of Calvary. Hallelujah. Today, many Pentecostal-type churches have moved, uh, non-denominational-type churches have moved the true Christian altar, the Lord's table, out from in front of the platform 
so that the congregation can better see the frolicking dancing of the worship group and the smoke machines and the frolicking lights. The emphasis is not on the cross. The emphasis is on entertainment. Let's bring back the Christian altar. Let's bring back the Lord's table. Let's put it back where it belongs, in the center place of our worship. God bless you. I am Bishop Jerry Hayes, Abbot General of the Apostolic Disciples of the Way. If you do not have a church in your area that is teaching the true apostolic faith, but you would like to establish an abbey, would you please get a hold of me? And we will help you establish a place of worship there that follows the teachings of Jesus Christ and his apostles. God bless you until we're together again. My prayer is that you go with God and that God goes with you.